Good day everybody. Welcome to our service of the Community in Christ. And I just want to remind you that we will resume our services from next week, the 11th of October, at half past five in the evening. It'll be at Glen Shield, the Jewel of Westcliff, situated on, at 19 Woolston Road, Westcliff. And you're welcome to join us. Normal precautionary me measures will take place social distancing, wearing of masks, sanitizing, etc. Today I'm going to address the issue of fake news on the basis of Paul's testimony in Philippians chapter 3 verses 4 to 13. First of all, hands up. Okay, I know I can't see you, but answer honestly anyhow. Hands up anybody listening or watching today who has ever told a lie? No one? How can we ever be trusted and believed again, never mind being asked to testify about anything? Do we not all exaggerate for effect? Some elaborate more dramatically, and to them, bulldust is natural. So how do we rely on testimonies such as Paul delivers in today's reading? Let me read. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to the zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to, the right, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet where, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but press on to make my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. And thus ends our reading for today. Paul gives very explicit reasons for being believed. His CV, as it were. He states that he used to follow the letter of the Jewish law and now regards it as rubbish, or dung, or dog meat as in the original Greek. His values have changed through his meeting Jesus. Today, who do you believe? Your spouse? Your partner? The minister? Politicians? Celebrities? me and why do you believe them we now ask and need evidence proof corroboration verification as to be believed indeed trust seems to have gone completely and skepticism does flourish philip j nickel in his essay trust and testimony says the following some recent accounts of testimonial warrant base it on trust and claim that doing so helps explain 
asymmetries between the intended recipient of testimony and the other non-intended hearers, e.g. differences in their entitlement to challenge the speaker or to rebuke, rebuke the speaker for lying. Nickel agrees, but to only, only to an extent, and that trust is vital. The Bible offers the following. In Psalm 22, verse 22, I will praise you to all my brothers. I will stand up before the congregation and testify of the wonderful things you have done. Or in Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8, Therefore, never be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Instead, by God's power, join me in suffering for the sake of the gospel. You know, the more I dug into this topic, the more my own trust started to waver. I began to wonder what is actually true. Some examples that sparked this inconsistency in my mind were the following. The first was Lady Godiva. Known for defiantly riding naked through the streets of Coventry, her husband, challenged by her to alter tax he, taxes he had imposed, stated that he would only do so when she rode naked on horseback through the town. Scholars agree that the ride never happened, and Godiva's myth didn't even appear for another 200 years. It was cemented by Tennyson's 1842 poem, Godiva, and somehow has become fact. Similarly, Nero, fiddling while Rome burned. However, the historian Tacitus denounced these claims as invention or rumours. Nero, he said, was in Antium as the fire started and returned to Rome to help lead rescues, rebuilding and providing sanctuary in his own palace gardens. The historical fiddling was an invention and Nero actually played the sitar, a lyre, not the violin. And one more example, Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake. The phrase first appeared in reference to a great princess in 1700. 68. The French Revolution was another 20 or years later. It appeared in Jean-Jacques Rousseau's book Confessions, and Marie would, then would have been in Austria and only 10 years old. It is suggested that this is part of a deliberate political game in which to smear her. Indeed, paradise is a state of mind. And modern endorsement being no less suspect in its credibility. For example, as you'll see from these pictures, Doris Day on a steamroller, George Clooney and coffee, Muhammad Ali promoting cockroach traps. Well, it's easy for them. They get paid fortunes for their hyperbole. David Beckham got $160 million from Adidas. Taylor Swift, $26 million from Diet Coke. Gwyneth Paltrow, $250 million from her Goop brand. But of course, endorsements too can go wrong. You may remember Tiger Woods when he was having affairs, his Nike deal broke down. O.J. Simpson committed murder and his Hertz deal broke down. Lance Armstrong, with his cheating, lost U.S. Postal a fortune. Some of you naturally are asking, so after all that, what is this testimony? Testimonial or to testify? I quote initially from Webster's. It's given as a noun, a dedication of truth or fact, law evidence given by a witness, especially orally in court, under oath or affirmation, evidence testifying to something. Or it could be an entrancative verb to make solemn declaration under oath for the purpose of establishing a fact. 
as in court. Or alternatively, in the attransitive verb, to make a statement based on personal knowledge or belief bearing witness, as Paul has done in our reading today. Some Christians, mainly evangelicals, use the term to tell a story of how they became Christian. Commonly, it was referred to, they refer to a very specific event. Today, there are modern trends in many faith to publish on the internet a social testimony. The oldest testimony before written history is oral. Information passed from one generation to another, it still goes on today. It is very useful for historians, providing a context to the written works, and although always to be treated with caution and being tested against other evidence. Last week I was reading a book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Oxford Doctor of History Yuval Noah Harari. I recommend chapter 17 entitled Post-Truth. It's not new fake news. We are the only mammals, he says, that can cooperate with strangers because we can, because only we can invent fictional stories, spread them around and convince millions to believe in them. We've been doing this for thousands of years. And more recently from The Economist, Amazon has just the product for you. It has been highly rated by scores of verified purchasers. They have left five-star ratings, lengthy reviews with, with photographs, and you are happy with your new gadget, unless those glowing recommendations are fraudulent. fraudulent. The working paper by the University of California and Southern California show elaborate schemes by sellers to hoodwink the public. Why? Bias. Are we biased? Are you biased? It's not a trick question. We surely are all biased in some way. You support the lions. You loathe the stormers. You love the stormers. You loathe the lions. And it shows too when considering many things. Think of the books you like, the music, the TV series, the politics, even goes as far as the weather. Bias is unfair and unbalanced opinion. Therefore, cross-referencing is essential in order to eliminate or to limit its effects. Think of the bad press that curriculum vitae, CVs, have had lately. Skepticism abounds with professional writing available on the internet. All I can say is, reader beware. Historical testimony is no less biased. Take Mary Magdalene. She was given poor, a poor reference by Pope Gregory the Great, who maligned her as a prostitute, something never mentioned in the Bible. Daniel, in a confined space with ravenous beasts, maybe a metaphor for dire trouble rather than a reality, but who would testify to it? And bias, no doubt, as Hitler's nurse said in 2005 when she was aged 93, he was charming. And worldwide we have politicians exaggerating with no consequences visited upon them then or later, either for lies or indeed bias. And yet, Christ encourages us to testify. Let me read for you. Mark 5, chapter 19. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he, ha how merciful he has been. Or in John 15, verses 26, 27, When the Helper comes, whom will I send to you from the Father? The Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father. He will testify on my behalf and you will testify also 
because you have been with me from the beginning. We are urged to share testimonies to encourage others also from the Bible. In Thessalonians 5, chapter 11, Wherefore, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as you do. Or in Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, And let us continue to consider how to motivate one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another even more as you see the day of the Lord is coming nearer. And lastly, in this regard, the Bible shows us how to be living examples to others. Again in Philippians chapter 1, 27 to 30, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. Or in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, you are a light of the world in the same way let your light shine in front of people. Then they will see the good that you do and praise your Father in heaven. And thus I conclude with what we can all try to practice each day. The world is changed by example, not opinion. From Polo Quello or from John 10 verses 37 to 38 where Jesus says, Believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I am in him. Amen. Yeah.